Oh, I'm sure we got lots of questions. But before we do that, I'd like to hear, uh, I'd like to move to a presentation from CNSC as outlined CMD 14H3 and 14H3.8. Uh, Mr. Elder, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the Commission. My name is Peter Elder. I'm the Director General of the Director of Nuclear Cycle and Facilities Regulation. With me today are Mr. Don Howard, Director of our Waste and Decommissioning Division, and Ms. Anne McClay, Senior Project Officer, who has been responsible for the licensing of Best Aerotronics. We also have with us a number of subject matter experts uh, from the CNSC who have participated in the review of this application. While the, ap the activities covered in Best Aerotronics application could would be considered at the low end of the risk for a Class 1B facility, CNSC staff included um, review elements from all relevant areas of expertise like, psych like um, psychotrons and processing facilities to confirm that BEST has appropriate safety and control measures in place. As it has been noted by BEST Theratronics, they are already licensed by the CNSC for the developing and testing of cobalt-60 teletherapy devices and the manufacturing of shelf-sealed irradiators. Best Theratronics is requesting all these activities being combined under one Class 1B license and in addition is requesting authorization to the, for the development and testing of psychotrons with a beam energy up to a maximum of 70 mega electron volts. I will now pass the presentation over to Don Howard. Good afternoon Mr. President and members of the Commission. For the record my name is Don Howard. This presentation will review CNSC staff's assessment of best Theratronics application for a Class 1B license. The CNSC presentation will briefly review current operations at best Theratronics, and then we will discuss CNSC staff's assessment of the application. Best Theratronics has submitted an application for a Class 1B license that would consolidate existing licenses for its Canada operations under a single license and would allow Best Theratronics to develop and test cyclotrons up to 70 MeV. The cyclotrons will not be used for any medical application. Under this license, Best Theratronics would be authorized to perform limited testing prior to disassembling the cyclotron before shipment. Therefore, radiation will only be present for a short time when the beam is on. I will now pass the presentation over to Ms. McClay, who will continue with CNSC staff's presentation. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Anne McClay. This slide presents an overview map of the location of Best Theratronics. Best Theratronics is located at 413 March Road in Canada. It is located within an industrial zone adjacent to the Nordion facility. The surrounding area is a mixture of residential, commercial, and industrial zoning. In the 1960s, it was part of Atomic Energy of Canada Lim Limited and was sold to Nordion in 1998. In 2008, it was sold to Best Theratronics, which is a privately owned company. Currently, Best Theratronics manufactures Cobalt 60 teletherapy machines, self shielded irradiators, and small cyclotrons. They also store sealed sources for two purposes. First, they use sealed sources as either check sources for equipment calibration or sources required for research projects. Secondly, they store used cobalt-60 and cesium-137 sources that are being returned from customers prior to shipment to Chalk River for long-term management. Best Theratronics also handles depleted uranium from older teletherapy units, which use depleted uranium for shielding. For modern equipment, depleted uranium is no longer used. Best Theratronics has specific procedures in place for handling this material. Current storage of the majority of Best Theratronics sealed sources and all hot cell related work is provided under contract to Nordion at Nordion's adjacent facility. After the equipment is manufactured, it is shipped to Nordion where the cesium-137 sealed sources are loaded into the equipment. The loaded equipment is then transferred back to Best Theratronics for final testing prior to shipment to customers. As previously mentioned, these activities are authorized under three separate CNSE-designated officer licenses 
that will form part of the proposed Class 1B license. Best Theratronics has also applied to include a new activity, which is for the testing of cyclotrons, also known as particle accelerators, and for extracting the beam with a beam energy greater than 50 MeV. Particle accelerators with a beam energy greater than or equal to 50 MeV are regulated under the CNSC Class 1 nuclear facility regulations. As previously mentioned, Best Theratronics does not intend to use the cyclotron for any medical application, but is seeking authorization to perform limited testing prior to disassembling the cyclotron before shipment. The following slides provide some general information on cyclotrons. Cyclotrons use a magnetic field generated by two large circular magnetic poles to bend charged particles into a spiral path. Acceleration is achieved by applying an electric field across a narrow gap between two electro chambers, which are sandwiched between the two magnetic poles. Once the charged particles reach the desired energy, they are extracted down a hollow tube called a beam line. They then travel down the beam line to strike a target. This causes a nuclear reaction in the target material, resulting in the production of a radioisotope. In this example, fluorine-18 is produced when protons hit an oxygen-18 target. Fluorine-18 is commonly used as a radioactive tracer in positon emission tomography, or PET scans. A PET scan is a nuclear medicine imaging test that can be used to evaluate normal and abnormal biological function of cells and organs. There are two types of radiation hazards from accelerators, prompt radiation and induced activity. The main radiation hazard from an accelerator is the prompt radiation, which is produced when the beam of particles impacts upon the target material. Prompt radiation is inst instantaneous, appearing when the accelerator is turned on and disappearing when it is switched off. After the beam is turned off, all that is left is whatever radioactive material has been produced in the components and target as induced activity. Best Theratronics is only building a test facility, not a full-scale production setup, so activation of the components should be minimal. Nevertheless, there are many safety and controls required to shut down the beam automatically. There are door interlocks where the beam will shut off should the door be opened during periods of beam operation greater than 1 MeV. This will ensure that no one can enter the cyclotron bunker while it's being operated. There is an emergency pull chain that shuts down the beam and opens a lock from inside the room in the unlikely event that a person is locked within the room. There are emergency stop buttons located on the console, in the high bay, and inside the shielding bunker so that a person can shut down the beam within five seconds. In the instance that the beam is grossly misaligned and hits the beam line, the cyclotron is designed to shut off in less than a second. Some key facts are, the radionuclides produced are usually short-lived. For example, sodium-24 has a 15-hour half-life. Activation occurs mainly in beamline components exposed to the beam, such as stripper foils, beamline, and beam target. Radionuclides on the components are not easily removed. You would have to take the cyclotron apart to get access to them and there is no loose contamination. The amount of activation depends on the material properties of the components, the beam energy, the beam current, and the time that the cyclotron is on. This slide shows two examples of CNSC licensed operating cyclotrons in Canada in comparison to the cyclotron that BEST is proposing. Triumph has a beam energy of 520 MeV with a current up to 0.25 milliamps. Advanced Cyclotron Systems has a cyclotron with a beam energy of 24 MeV and a beam current up to 0.75 milliamps. In comparison, the beam current for best Theratronics is very small at 10 to the minus 5 milliamps for testing up to an energy of 70 MeV. Due to the low current used and the short testing times, there is very little induced activity in the components of the cyclotron. CNSC staff performed a comprehensive and rigorous review of best Theratronics application, which included an environmental impact statement, a decommissioning plan and financial guarantee for the complete site, and programs covering all safety and control areas. I would note that best Theratronics needed to revise and update their existing programs in a number of safety and control areas, 
to meet the application requirements for the Class 1B facility as compared to the current licenses. An EA was initiated under the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act 2012 and completed under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act after changes in the SIA regulations in the fall of 2013. CNSC staff used all the information in reaching a final conclusion under the NSCA. Best Theratronics was required to consider a wide range of accidents and malfunctions for the environmental assessment. This included more extreme events such as flooding. Essentially, this is very similar to what other Class 1B licenses were required to do after the Fukushima accidents. The EA concluded that there were limited interactions between the facility and the environment. With the current mitigations in place, no significant effects were predicted. Also, the current monitoring conducted by Best Theratronics was determined to be sufficient and no specific follow-up activities were recommended. CNEC staff concluded a thorough assessment of Best Theratronics application. As mentioned, this included preparing the environmental assessment report, which is attached to our CMD. In a number of areas, Best Theratronics was required to resubmit programs. CNEC staff continued to require improvements until all programs were considered acceptable. The next few slides discuss some of these areas. One area where Best Theratronics was required to update programs and procedures was around operation of the cyclotrons. Since Best Theratronics plans to test and then dismantle the cyclotrons, the operational requirements for both commissioning and dismantling are considered to be significant events from a safety point of view. Therefore, CNSC staff have proposed specific license conditions 16.1 and 16.2 that requires Best Theratronics to submit detailed procedures prior to conducting these activities. The conditions act as hold points so that CNEC staff can confirm that the health and safety of workers is protected. CNEC staff required best theratronics to make specific program improvements. For management systems, there were required revisions to records management, change management, operating experience, and management of contractor documents. For training, there were revisions to the responsibilities, qualifications, and training program. And for security, we asked Best Theratronics to provide a threat and risk assessment for the 70 MEV cyclotron. The revised programs were evaluated by CNAC staff and found to be satisfactory. I would now like to discuss radiation protection, which is a key safety and control area for Best Theratronics. While Best Theratronics deals with sealed sources and fixed radiation, the sources can pose a serious hazard to workers if all safety barriers fail. The past history of Best Theratronics demonstrates that these barriers remain in place and have been effective. The maximum dose to workers has typically been less than 2.5 millisieverts per year. This is for personnel who install and remove sources from the teletherapy equipment. The majority of workers receive less than 0 0.5 millisieverts per year. The license application assessment concluded that Best Theratronics has an effective RP program in place and is adequate for the new cyclotron testing activities. Radiation doses at Best Theratronics are presented on this slide. The annual regulatory dose limit of 50 millisieverts is at the top of the slide. Best Theratronics action level of 8 millisieverts and administrative control level of 6 millisieverts are also shown on the slide. In the past five years, doses to workers has ranged from 0 0.9 to 2.5 millisieverts per year, which are all well below these limits. CNSC staff conclude that with the new activities, the levels remain appropriate and doses are expected to stay low. The next two slides summarize CNEC staff's review of the application, taking into consideration the improvements required by CNEC staff. Best Theratronics has made the necessary program improvements so that the programs in all areas are satisfactory. These are the rest of the safety and control areas ratings. There are no outstanding compliance issues from recent inspections under the current licenses. The most significant compliance event was an order which was issued to Best Theratronics by a designated officer in July 2012 regarding sealed source tracking 
after evidence was found that Bastyrtronics was not reporting transfers of sources as required by its license. Best immediately addressed the conditions of the order and submitted an action plan. The requirements were met in July 2012. Since 2012, CNSC inspectors have confirmed that Best remains in compliance and CNSC staff confirmed that the improvements at Best Theratronics connected to the order were included in the application. This concludes the review of compliance and I will now pass the presentation over to Mr. Don Howard to discuss the financial guarantee. Thank you. Best Theratronic currently has a financial guarantee of $129,000 for storage of seal sources. It was recognized by CNSC staff that this guarantee did not cover its complete facility under a Class 1B license. Therefore, as part of this application, BEST was required to submit a preliminary decommissioning plan and update the financial guarantee to cover all activities. CNSC staff assessed this plan against regulatory expectations and concluded that the plan was acceptable. CNSC staff also reviewed the financial guarantee and concluded that the cost estimate of $3.75 million was acceptable. This is considered sufficient to cover removal of all radioactive material and hazardous material from the facility. This also includes removal of all seal sources stored at the Nordion facility. BEST has proposed a surety bond as its financial guarantee. A surety bond is a promise to pay one party a certain amount if a second party fails to meet some obligation. This is used heavily in the construction industry by general contractors so that they will adhere to provisions of the contract. CNSC staff concluded that surety bonds are acceptable to form part of a financial guarantee with their appropriate commitments and monitoring. Examples of monitoring include reporting the financial that the financial guarantee remains valid, in effect, and adequate to fund decommissioning of the facility. Also, the wording of the surety bond will be subjected to a legal review in order to minimize any financial risk. Therefore, CNSC staff is proposing a two-phase approach. Provide a financial guarantee, such as a letter of credit, to place that will place the facility in a safe storage. The, and the remainder of the financial guarantee can be in the form of a surety bond. The proposed license requires BESS to have a financial guarantee in place by January 31st, 2015. An update on the progress of the financial guarantee will be presented to the Commission in October 2014. CNSC staff assessed the Public Information Disclosure Program against RDGD 99.3 titled Public Information and Disclosure. CNSC staff concluded that Best Theratronics Revised Program meets regulatory requirements. CNSC staff will include Best Theratronics in the annual performance report with other nuclear processing facilities. CNSC staff therefore recommends that the Commission issue a Class 1B operating license for a period of five years. A five-year license is common for facilities when transitioning from an activity-based license to a facility-based license. The five-year license will allow Best Theratronics to implement all programs and for CNSC staff to verify their implementation. CNSC staff also recommends that the Commission endorse the delegation of authority to act as a person authorized by the Commission as is normal for this type of license. In particular, CNSC staff are recommending that an authorized person can approve the commissioning and dismantling plans. The criteria of these approvals are listed in the License Condition Handbook. This concludes the presentation and staff is available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you.